What's going on YouTube? Doing something different today. Mike's rig needs the new front brakes. We got those over there. So we're gonna change those. What are you doing, Mike? Uh, just putting the jack under here, but I'm pretty sure it's just gonna slide off. The jack or the jack stand? Because the jack's over jack here. Jack stand. Okay. Jack stand. So we're gonna try to get this done today. Over here taking the wheel off. Check out that wear pattern. Pretty good. Hardcore stock car uh, wear. Well, that's because it is a stock car. It is a stock truck. Stock truck. All right, so we took the wheel off. Next step is to take this caliper off. The uh, caliper pin bolts, I guess they're called. I don't know. They're uh, 14 millimeter on this Ranger. So we're gonna get those off. Those shouldn't be too bad. I've done the brakes on this. Uh, I think I did pads maybe 60,000 miles ago. Uh, didn't you do them when you did your clutch and all that? Yeah, I did a, I did a little overhaul at 90,000, so those shouldn't be too bad. The next ones, the ones holding the bracket that hold the caliper, those might be a little bit of a trick. Okay, onto the bracket next. Uh, you got the three ace uh, oh, you got the breaker bar on there with yep. a uh, 15 millimeter? Yeah. Okay, yep. how'd that go? Uh, bottom one went. Dude, do you want that tire out of the way or are you just gonna... No, I'm good. That's I'm ballast. Sure. Ballast. That's helping me out. Alright, this is the tough one. You gotta get inside of the spindle. And you got it. Alright, so far coming up. Those are the ones that are gonna be stuck with those ones, so we should be smooth sailing from now on. Alright, taking the uh, grease cap off now. Just trying to get it broken off a little bit, and you can start prying it. Got any movement yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Alright, we're in. Look green. It's green? Yeah. So uh, you can see we got the uh, cotter pin in there. With uh, It's actually not a castle nut, it looks like. It's a uh, some kind of retainer that slides over the the actual nut itself. Um, so yeah, what we have to do on this Ranger is um, is take them off, uh, take the whole hub off. They don't have rotors that are, are removable like in a lot of cars. So you see those studs there for the wheels. You know, those are actually um, part of the rotor. It's all one piece. It's it's one hub. So we're gonna take the whole thing off and um, change the change the bearings while we're at it. I bought some new bearings. They were like uh, four four or five dollars uh, for the inner and outer. Um, each so you know total about twenty dollars for um for bearings i feel like it's worth it you're already in it you know you're gonna have to repack them get a that's, shot of that that's the cap nice yeah you're gonna have to repack them so it's like might as well do new ones see that loose hand tight right yeah not even it's tight. crazy when you think about it but uh yeah that's all you need it's well because this does a tapered bearing right yeah a taper roller bearing so you're not you're not trying to squeeze them you're just trying to set a little bit of tension on them I'm anxious to see what the back of this rotor is going to look like. And again, we have new new bearings, so if these fall on the floor, no big deal. Go ahead, let's see the big unveil. Oh my that's, God. yeah, that's pretty much destroyed. This is why you should change your brakes regularly. We'll get it up on the bench, uh, maybe get a little better view on it, throw a picture in there so you guys can really appreciate how bad it is. Alright, we're in the midst of a uh, mini bike build here, so we kind of got a lot of stuff going on. These brakes really couldn't wait any longer, as you can see there. Um, so these uh, new rotors uh, came with the outer races of both bearings, the inner and outer bearings, uh, pressed in. But I bought the whole bearing, and I don't know, I'm, I'm not that comfortable with using like half a bearing from here and half a bearing from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap these out, and then I'm going to um, put in new bearings uh, since we have a press it's like you know I'm more comfortable just doing it like this than than using half and half so I just kind of got to break it loose and then work it around in a circular fashion like that it's going all right both the races are pushed out uh, over here at the uh, Another Harbor Freight tool. Harbor Freight. Uh, I only buy Harbor Freight tools if they have like less than like three moving parts. So um, 
this should be okay. The breaker bar also counts. So I just, this is the old brace, just because it's, I don't know, it, I guess it's the right diameter or whatever, you know. So I'm just going to take it and just tap it a little bit just to get it started. It has a bevel on it, so it wants to go in pretty good. Make sure it looks pretty square, which it doesn't. That's pretty good, and I put some grease on it. Um, hopefully it'll slide in a little easier. And uh, yeah, just I want to make sure it's started. So it doesn't want to go in all crooked, it, um, then it'll just bind up and, and you'll, you'll end up wrecking it. So that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll just set this up to uh, press it down. It looks pretty lined up there. There we go. What do you got, a piece of a uh, quarter inch there? Yeah, I think, yeah. And I'm, and I'm using the old, uh, the old race again. I just want to get a little more centered. Let's see how it can look. Pretty good. The only thing is, I think this race, uh, the old one's gonna catch, but I should be able to just tap it back out pretty easily. It should be good there. All right, so we got the these. The, everything's Duralast here. Duralast pads, rotors, and um, and bearings. Duralast is uh, AutoZone uh, parts. Um, I want to show you guys something. Um, you can see my finger is like relatively clean right now. I mean, it, it's not clean, but look what happens when I just run it in here, in that machine surface of where the bearings go in. That's pretty much all metal. Like, they must just blast these things out. And if you look real close, you can see metal chips and stuff in there. So they must just blast these things out. Uh, you know, ram a tool in there, put it on a lathe or something, and, and just blow them off with air. Uh, basically not even clean them. So uh, I'd suggest if you get these uh, or any import, I'm not sure if these are, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure these are import. They might be remanufactured, but I'm pretty sure they're import. So, um, but yeah, just take a minute, clean them up, uh, spray them with some brake cleaner or something. Cause uh, you don't, you don't want that getting in your brand new bearings. All right, both of the races uh, inner and outer are pressed in on both of these. Um, now comes the messy part, uh, packing the grease into the bearings. Um, the way I'm going to do it is just basically take a whole bunch of it and just put it in my palm of the other hand. And there's no, it's, there's no clean way to do it. So, I mean, you can wear gloves, but whatever. It's only grease, right? So I just kind of just spin it around and just, just do it in like this. I mean, everyone does it a little different. And some guys say this isn't really necessary to pack them in because it'll just, once it rotates, it does its own thing. But I don't know. Why not, you know? So... Yeah, pretty much makes a mess, and uh, that's about it. So I gotta do this in all four of them, and then um, we'll be ready to throw them back on the spindles. And we're using real grease today. Yeah, Ford Lincoln Mercury grease. Valvoline. None of that, uh, what's, what's Walmart's brand? Hype Super Tech or whatever? Yeah, Super, no super Tech. tech no Super Tech here. Yeah. No. All right, all the bearings are packed. Um, the inner ones I packed and I put them on the spindle already. Um, you know, I'm going to put this, put them on the spindle and I'm going to put the rotor on and then put the outer one in and then do the nut. You know, it's kind of, there's a little bit of a sequence to it. But for now, I'm going to just load them up, pack them up with a bunch of grease inside of here. Um, just pretty much load it up, you know, and some of it's probably going to ooze out of the, uh, of the other side when I put it on, you know, when the spindle pushes it up, but that's fine. Um, you know, I don't know why, maybe someone knows, I'm not a car mechanic, but why they don't put uh, Zerk fittings to grease these after? Like, I don't know why you have to do this, but, you know, know. all it take is one little tapping and a, and a Zerk fitting, but whatever, that must make sense. They don't do it for no reason, I'm sure. All right, everything should be ready to go back together. Load it up with grease, load it up with grease, uh, and I have the bearing here. I'm um, leaving it out of the box, you know, I mean, this is a dirty garage, you don't want any contaminants getting in there. A little bit of uh, dirt or, um, you know, some like metal shavings or something could really probably wreak havoc down the line. So, just gonna go ahead, set it on there, just kind of get it centered on the, uh, on that bearing, and you can see that it pushed out a lot of this out, but that's fine, I'll just kind of push it back in a little bit, take the bearing, 
set it on in there. And then, um, yeah, for now I'm just going to put these on so it doesn't fall off or anything. I'm just going to put the nut on, but I'm not going to worry about setting the torque just yet. All right, trying to get a shot of the, uh, trying to get a shot of the action here, putting the pads in. I'm not sure what you can see besides the back of Joey's head. Oh yeah, that's the way to do it. Start hammering. <laughs> Start hammering. Oh, uh, the thing is, there's like clips on these calipers. You can see them better over here. You have to kind of push them out of your way. And then they really press on the pad, so... Okay. Well, uh, just tune back in when you're uh, all set, because I can't really see too much from here anyways. Alright, what you're seeing now is uh, we're compressing the pistons back in. This is a two-piston two caliper, right? Yeah. I think that's a like a five or six inch C clamp. Uh, that's that's good enough. That works good. Yeah. Um, also, a little trick. I just use the old brake pad on it. Yeah. Because it spreads the weight out evenly. Yeah, and you want to be careful. You don't want to. Uh, yeah. You don't want to do it too fast. No, what I was gonna say. That's fine. That's gonna happen. What I was gonna say is you don't want to just cram them in all the way and then you rip the rubber boot. But yeah, we got as you can see, we got a little bit of leakage there, just uh, overfilling the reservoir. Uh, I think didn't you know what we we recently filled this with brake fluid for some reason oh because oh. my brake light kept coming on yep. so we we topped it off so that that's why we got what we got here but no big deal we'll just uh, add some more after we're all set so I got the pistons compressed in the caliper um, these bolts are usually on most cars on like a slider pin type deal yeah. So self-locating self or whatever. Yeah, so after you get the, the pistons compressed, you have a little bit of wiggle room. I usually go all the way down. You probably don't need to, but I do. And then you get brake fluid everywhere. But it's Yeah, we actually kind of have a little bit. <laughs> it's like a full blown waterfall in there, but uh, hey, it's all right. It's only brake fluid. It'll be fine. Where's the uh, other bolt? Here's one of them right here. And again, for the Ford Ranger, these are the 14 millimeter. All right, everything with the brakes is assembled. The only thing left we have to do is put the wheels on and then um, torque up the nut here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just spray this, uh, I guess some, some brake cleaner, uh, actual brake clean brand, but uh, I think it was two for, two for five or two for six. So I'm gonna spray these down, wipe them down with a nice clean rag. Um, as you can see, the puddle got substantially larger down here. Um, and what we concluded was that my brake pads were probably so worn that, um, you know, the, the, the pistons were out so much that the actual fluid level in the uh, reservoir was down. So um, that's why I was getting the brake light. And uh, then we topped it off. And then once you push the pistons back in uh, approximately where they should be, uh, there's too much. And it pushes it back up through the reservoir and all over the floor. So, I'm just gonna spray this. Uh, I wanna be careful since this is a solvent. I wanna make sure I don't get any in where the grease is and where the bearings are. Just uh, clean up the surface of the rotors a little bit since they have all grease and stuff on them. All right, putting the wheel back on. I got the uh, passenger side wheel on. I did a little rotation. Just put the, uh, just rotated side to side. Um, and I think it's taking a while. It's going on forever. Yeah, so we'll get these on and we'll get a feel for how tight our bearings are. And um, put those caps back on and pretty much be done with this job, hopefully. Take it out, make sure there's no squeaks or anything like that. Um, we'll check the fluid reservoir, the reservoir level too, um, after, but I, I don't anticipate that being a problem. I think that was, like I was saying earlier, it was just because the, the pistons were drawn in so far. Action. Alright, so I'm just spinning the tire, um, trying to work the bearing in a little bit more. Uh, make sure they're all seated nice. Yeah, you're only, you're only going to have to go hand tight. Um, some guys use channel locks. Uh, I don't think you really need that much that much tension on it. Um, and I'm just looking for a little bit of play. You're just looking to feel a little bit of play in it. Not much, 
and it's it's nothing you can really even explain. Uh, you just have to basically feel it and and just sense a tiny bit. Um, if if it's too tight and it feels like there's no movement at all, like it's all just one piece, it's it's probably gonna be a little too tight, and you're gonna get a little bit too much heat buildup. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a real thing. You gotta have a little bit of a feel for it. Um, maybe the first time you do it, it'd be good if someone else can can uh, guide you through it that's done it before. That way they can torque it and you can kind of get an idea of the feel. But um, yeah, just you definitely don't want to go too tight on these. Yeah, I got it somewhere that feels pretty good. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. Put this retainer back on. I'm going to reuse the cotter pin. It seems all right. Um, but yeah, just put that in there. Give it a nice twist up on each side. And that's going to be it. Then I just have to tap the cap back on there. And um, make sure that right here. Just tap it on. Hopefully I don't dent it too much. This could be a little bit of a trick to get on, but um, yeah, that's about it. I'll have to check the uh, reservoir level again to make sure we're good. And uh, I'm going to actually hit it on like this. And then um, that yeah, should be a done job. Alright, so that should do it for the uh, brake job. Um, barring anything with the uh, road test, uh, like I said again, I'll check the reservoir. I don't anticipate any problems with that. Um, all the wheels are tightened on. So I'll just go ahead and let it down uh, nice and slow here. And um, so yeah, it's another done job of the Janik Journal. Um, catch us next time. We'll definitely be doing some more work on the mini bikes.